as we celebrate this week of Holy Week, it's important to remember, and as we begin our examination of the seven last words of Christ, we are taught in this house by our pastor that God never wastes words. So it's very important on tonight that as we celebrate and talk about the last words of Christ, that the, another teaching resonates in my spirit about the woman with the alabaster box. Stay with me. How that she... Uh, broke the alabaster box and began to anoint Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair. And because God doesn't waste words, the anointing is never wasted. And there were some folks in the room who uh, 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 thought that what she was doing was uncalled for. As a matter of fact, they perpetrated like many of us do at times. And they, 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 they said the, money, the, uh, the oil could have been used to buy some money for the poor. You and I both know that they were not concerned about the, the poor. But they were attempting to undermine her assignment. But Jesus rebukes them in the situation and says, not only was what she was doing was necessary, but it was fulfilling an assignment. Let's define what an assignment is. An assignment is a task, a charge, a commission assigned to someone as part of their job. And there are three characteristics that I like to attach to an assignment is the location of the assignment, the position of the assignment, and the function inside of the assignment. So inside of these moments in the seven last words of Christ, my scripture is, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, inside of these moments, I'm going to explain the reason these words are important and demonstrate to you your role and responsibility, how these words pertain to you. It's important to note that Jesus got himself in this precarious situation because of his willingness to suffer and to die, assignment. And it bears in contrast to the expectations of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Roman court because they simply thought that when Jesus said, I am the king of the Jews, that he came to set up his own earthly kingdom. But you and I both know the reason why we're sitting here is that his assignment was far greater than their microscopic minds could comprehend. So for those of you, about 20 of you are with me right now, those of you that are really, really with me right now, I want you to insert yourself into the scene of the cross because at times we often view this text from a spectator standpoint, but I want you to insert yourself at the foot of the cross. Hey, thank you, God. I can see Jesus on the cross. You're there too. And his mind is replaying images of the things that he encountered that brought him to this point. But he's able to muster up enough conversation to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, I wonder who is they? Have you ever asked somebody, they said they did that, they did this. Who is they? So I asked God, who is the them that he's talking about? Was he talking about the soldiers that were casting lots at the bottom of the cross? Was he talking about his mother or his father because he reminisced about the fact that when he fell back in the family reunion caravan, they came back and rebuked him, but he was about his father's business. Was he reminiscing about the fact that Judas back betrayed him, Sister Trina, for less than a cheap date for 30 pieces of silver? How about, how about he was talking about you and I? Oh yeah, you don't get off that easy. If you recall about... Four months ago, while Pastor was out of the city on a couple of Wednesdays, the Lord used Elder Bernard to teach on the importance of praise and worship. I'm in trouble now. And so some of us, I'm a member here, but some of us scoffed at the fact that Pastor was gone and therefore we didn't know it and that God was using somebody to teach about something that many of us shy away from because we don't understand. So just like tonight, when we don't understand our true assignment, we don't know what to do. Oh, help me, God. But the Lord spoke to me as he was, as he was teaching that night. He said, Ty, the purpose, uh, uh, the pur because the scripture says the hour has come and now is where the true worshipers shall worship him in, in spirit and in truth. And, and the Lord said the purpose of the message was to continuously provide appropriate language and verbiage to the believer to use in this hour. So that's why words like just God is good and ain't he wonderful, sometimes that's not enough. You need another language to talk about your God. Talking about Holy Week, right? Why he's El Shaddai, he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah my righteousness. Okay, so how does this tie into the fact that Father forgive them for they know not what they do? Before this week, have you been doing your assignment of praising and worship God? Don't answer that. Just keep looking forward. Nobody will know I'm talking to you. Because we, ex 
God expects us as believers to have the maturity, not of that of a five-year-old, but of a grown adult in the spirit. So this brings me to my, to my end. The text does not allow for us to know the conversation in his head that he had with God. The only thing we can go by are the words that came out of his mouth. And I told you in the beginning that God does not waste words. So the words that Jesus spoke meant something. Why did he say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do instead of saying, Father, I forgive them? That changes the whole syntax of the sentence. Come on, English majors. I believe according to the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost, that God was reminding Jesus of his perfected assignment. You said, Ty, what is that? I told you that assignment speaks to location, function, and position. And the Bible says that Christ, after he had finished the things on the cross, is seated in heavenly places, location. Secondly, the Bible says, and seated at the right hand of the Father, which speaks to a position of favor and honor. And finally, the Bible says in Romans 8 and 34 that the Bible says he's sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession for the saints. What is the importance of him praying that you do know that when you go to heaven, that you're not going to be up there just walking up and down the streets of gold, sipping spiritual frappes from McDonald's corn. You won't be doing that. But the Bible says, according to Revelation 5 and 11, I looked and heard a voice of many angels around the throne and living creatures, that's me and you, breathing creatures, proclaiming, worthy is the lamb who was what? Slaughtered to receive power, riches, wisdom, and strength, blessings, and honor, glory, and dominion. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to open your mouth right here and begin to bless him with glory, honor, strength, power. So in my closing, I decree and declare, no more shall we lament over the scene of the cross. Having now realized that Christ's words were exercised and perfected in his, in his assignment. For the Bible says, he is now seated as our high priest, an intercessor and we now here on earth perfect our 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 assignment through audible praise and worship and the word of the lord is blessed